I guess if I can just get you to start from the beginning and tell me what happened at the airport. Yeah, so I had uh, gone to San Francisco airport, um, was scheduled to take a flight back to Toronto, uh, a nighttime flight. So when I was going through security, you know, I went through all the security protocols, the, the x-ray and then the, the metal wand swabbing and, and even the swab stuff. Um, and afterwards, the, one of the agents had told me that, listen, we got to take you to the private room for some for some additional searches. And I bring a be, uh, brown man that has to travel a lot through airports. I get this a lot. So I understand. I'm like, oh, geez, not again. Either it's because I'm brown or they just really like touching my body a lot. So I get it. And uh, so I went into the private room and, uh, you know, the guy put on his gloves, that imagery. And I was like, oh, boy. Uh, and then one of the agents was like, listen, we're going to need you to remove your turban. Now, this has never happened to me before. And I travel a lot. And uh, I was like, I, I would rather not because I got a flight to catch and, you know, I just don't want to have to deal with that inconvenience. Could you just pat me down just like any other of my article of clothing? It's just at the end of the day, it's just cloth. So I'm sure you can feel through it. And they're like, listen, we can't really do that. So I asked to speak to the manager <coughs> and the manager came and she pretty much gave me like an ultimatum. She's like, if you can either take off your turban and, you know, we could search you and let you through or we could just escort you back out to the public area. and You can book a flight with anybody else. And so when she gave me that, ultimately I was like, geez, okay, I'm, I'm just trying to get back to Toronto now, now at this point. So uh, I took off my turban and they, they put it in a tray and they ran it through, which was like funny imagery. It's just my turban running through the x-ray. <laughs> After they'd already x-rayed it and then done all those security measures. So, you know, uh, they, they ran it through and brought it back to me. And um, so when they brought it back to me, they're like, all right, cool, you're ready to go. We haven't found anything obviously. So uh, I said, okay, can I get a mirror or something to, to retie my turban? Because unlike a hat or, or a shoe or anything, it takes time and effort to put back on again. Some, it'll take anywhere from five to 10 minutes to, to put back on. And the kind of the attitude that I got from the TSA agents was like, listen, this, we don't provide mirrors. We don't have any mirrors here. And it's like, not, you know, that's not our job. Like we've done our job. We've made sure the safety of our passengers is, is up to par. And, you know, we went through all the protocols and you're pretty much good to go. So I was like, well, what do you want me to do? now and one of the agents was like listen there's a public bathroom at the other end of the terminal so if you want to walk out and tie it there uh, you can do that and so it was kind of a little bit insensitive in that in that matter because I was like you would ask me to come into a private room to to undress um, but you want me to walk out undressed again so I can go to a bathroom and, and retie my turban which kind of defeats the purpose of taking me to a private room in the first place so that attitude or that kind of vibe that I got off the TSA agents I think was extremely insensitive and at the end of the day, my issue wasn't necessarily with me taking off my turban because I understand the safety protocols and, and all that stuff. So I, I, I cooperated with them, you know, to the best of my ability and to everything that they asked. But when I asked for a simple request to get a mirror or something, um, they it was necessarily like, hey, you're not our problem anymore. Like, you can go ahead and like, this is this is not our issue. Like, we've done our job. And, you can go to a bathroom and tie it. So I, I know for you, for you specifically, because you've gone sort of both ways on it. But yeah. for for someone who, I mean, can you explain to me what that might have been? That feeling might have been like. It's embarrassing. It's fully embarrassing. It's demoralizing, and it's something that I don't wish like anybody should have to go through. Like it's just, it complete. Like when I mean it's completely demoralizing, it really is because it's having to walk throughout a turban, walk throughout the airport with your hair out, with your turban out, is not something that I wish any anybody to have to go through. Because I know how that feels, and I, and I know how other sick men or anybody that wears a cultural or religious headgear would feel about that. The response that you've been getting on social media has been overwhelmingly supportive, and yet there have been a couple of tweets. Um, can you share some of those that might that, that have sort of made you go, hmm? Yeah, I mean, some of the tweets that I've gotten are people like, what's the big deal? Like, they made you take off your turban, who cares? They make me take off my shoes and, and belt all the time. And, like, I get it. Like. I mean, the thing was like, at the end of the day, my problem was with them, wasn't with them asking to take off my turban. It was the, how they dealt with it afterwards, after everything was said and done. And another thing is like, taking off a turban is not like taking off a hat. You can't just put it back on. Like it needs time and effort to, to put back on again. So, I mean, when I get responses like that, it's it's kind of hard to to make others understand how it feels if, if you're not looking, because they're just going to look at it as an article of clothing, whereas a lot of people from my community look at it much more than that.